Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. We the people. We the people. We the people. We the people of the United States. States. In order to form a more perfect, perfect union, union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and, and secure the blessings of liberty, of liberty to, to ourselves, ourselves and, and our, our posterity. posterity. Do ordain. Y establecemos esta constitución for the United States of America. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's a new day, everybody. New day, new day has dawned. I don't know who Dawn is, but I woke up at her crack this morning and I could smell the success already. I could smell the hope. I could feel a vibe of change. I could say to myself, oh my God, oh my God, look at this Congress. It looks much more, much more like America. It looks much more like our towns, like our suburbs, like our communities, like our cities, like our hinterlands. It look, this is the most female and the most ethnically diverse Congress ever. Ever. Before this, the only place you could find diversity was in the fact that Paul Ryan was Irish and a vampire. I mean, uh, uh, historically, the highest profile person in the House of color was John Boehner, who was also orange. I don't know what that is. I don't know why these men of, uh, you know, now, of course, he uh, shills for the pot industry, you know, trying to find angel investors for, uh, you know, the pot industry. Well, good for you. Back then, you know, he was on the booze all the time. He would drink the wine and cry. I don't know if you remember, John Boehner used to cry all the time, all the time. And the, uh, he, was, he was definitely an orange person, you know, and uh, this was the most diverse thing about Congress was that we had an orange person and that we had had an Irish man slash vampire. So uh, here you have the incoming Democrats. Uh, 40 new seats, which is the most that the Democrats have picked up since uh, 1974 after Watergate. And the president of the United States keeps telling you there was no blue wave. There was, listen, uh, uh, we got 49 after Watergate. We haven't even had the gate in Trump yet open. So just wait. This is unbelievable. And by a vote of uh, 220, uh, Nancy Pelosi has just been sworn in as the uh, Speaker of the House. If the gentlewoman from California would please raise her right hand, which you're doing, do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you're about to enter, so help you God. I do. Congratulations, <laughs> Madam Speaker. I now call the House to order on behalf of all of America's children. <laughs> go kids, go kids. No, go she kids. means go, she means go, go. How do I get rid of the kids? <laughs> <laughs> How do I get rid of them? I invited them up here. I thought it would make a good follow-up, and now I would like to uh, have them leave. And uh, I don't, uh, you know, some of them wanted to be on television. Is what it was. That was it was just. It was. It was good. It was very good. So she is now the new speaker of the house. She's also the old speaker of the house. She's still the first female speaker of the house, and the only female speaker of the house. Oh my God. Now, that right there alone should let everybody know that Nancy Pelosi deserves to be Speaker of the House just because she nailed it. She nailed down the job. She got the freaking job. So, you know, this might be another year of the woman, but Nancy Pelosi got herself elected back in 1986. And for those of you too young to remember, 
1986 was the year of the man, <laughs> and every year since, has except for one, has been the year of the man. So good for her. Good for her. Every year back then was the year of the man. Every freaking year was the year of the man. So, you know, here, here you have a, an incoming Democratic freshman class that, uh, you know, may try to distance themselves from Nancy Pelosi, but everything in the Democratic Party now revolves around uh, Nancy Pelosi, the new Speaker of the House, the old Speaker of the House, the f first female Speaker of the House, and the only female Speaker of the House. Keep that in mind as you... Uh, Hear people trash her. <clears throat> Just saying, no matter what we do, they're going to trash. You know, Elizabeth Warren, she's too progressive. Nancy Pelosi, she's too whatever. Do you know she's too female? She's got, uh, she barely has any estrogen, for God's sake. Come on, she's been through the changing walls. Barely has any. But uh, this is the most diverse uh, Congress I have ever seen in my life. This is the 116th Congress, everybody. 116. It's a very magical Congress. It's a 23 years ago. Here's the story of just one person who was sworn in today. 23 years ago, from a refugee camp in Kenya, a young girl with her father arrived at an airport in Washington, D.C. And today, she flew back to that same airport to become the first Somali-American woman and the first Somali-American of any, uh, any orientation ever. Her name is Elon Omar. And she's just one of the dozens of amazing stories uh, that we now have in our party, in our caucus, whether or not you're an independent, you know, independents uh, like me, we caucus with the Democrats because for God's sake, being an independent uh, really does mean you're open-minded and there is no room for you in the Republican Party. I mean, none. You are either a Trump ass licker or you do not have a place at all in the Republican Party's politics, period, end of story. If you are not, did you, I know you heard Whitaker, maybe you didn't yesterday. This is so sick. The ass kissing that goes, it's like, it's, it, it's, he runs this shop of it. And what do we have now? We have nothing but acting. We have nothing but second string, third string. I mean, his whole cabinet. This is like in football, I think they call it garbage time. Okay, when you have second and third string, like this is worse than preseason. You know what I mean? When they, they bring out the third string, the fourth string, oh, trying to, his agent is watching, let's hope he doesn't twist an ankle or break a thing, you know, FEMA, while he's trying to impress, you know, uh, uh, in the draft season. I mean, it's just so, and this is who is running our country. This is who is running. We have actings, and we have deputies, and we have uh, fly-by-nights, and we have, you know, fourth string, and wannabes, and Boeing executives running the military. I mean, it's just uh, with no government experience. So Whitaker, his, his uh, uh, you know, oath to the president came yesterday. He had to sit there and swear, you know, an oath to the president, not to the Constitution, to the president, and kiss his ass literally in public about this horrific shutdown that Trump said he was proud, proud to do in the name of border security, right? Sir, Mr. President, I, I will start by highlighting the fact that you stayed in Washington, D.C. over the holidays, giving up Christmas with your family, New Year's with your family, he hates trying family. to bring an end to this shutdown and security to our southern border. Uh. While members of Congress, some members of Congress went on vacation and ignored the problem. You have demonstrated your dedication to delivering on this critical issue for our country and for the American people. But Congress has to act. They have to fund the wall. It is undeniable that a border wall improves the security of our southern border. A wall would reduce the flow of drugs, gangs like the violent MS-13, and criminals across our border, like you highlighted the brave officer who was a legal immigrant who was murdered by an illegal immigrant in California. Yeah, it turns out that illegal immigrant that uh, committed just one of the 72 million murders that happen every day in this country by gunfire is mentally unstable. He's mentally ill. And as you know, crime in immigrant communities 
is much lower than the national average. But here was Nancy Pelosi responding uh, to this you didn't stay in Washington bull this morning on the Today Show. But the fact is we all stood ready and we told our members we'll have 24 hours notice for all of us to be where we need to be. And the president may not know this, but Hawaii is part of the United States of America. Maybe he doesn't realize that. That's why I said Barack Obama wasn't born in the United States when he was born in Hawaii. The, the Hawaii has airports and airlines and telephones, so the communication is good. But the very idea uh, that he would suggest such a thing shows the poverty of his thinking. The fact is that our members stood ready, were on alert, in constant communication to open up government. The president is proud of shutting down government. That's the difference between us. Not where we, I don't know where the president observed the religious holiday of Christmas. Do you? Did he observe the, uh, <laughs> I, I happily saw uh, a holy night and silent night and the rest being sung in Hawaiian and danced uh, to Hawaiian movements and the rest. It was a beautiful part of American culture. Now, I would pay money to see Nancy Pelosi dance to Hawaiian movements. And music. Uh, I think most people would. I do. I think it's a whole new genre of porn. Uh, you know, uh, seriously, just, just, you know, I would. But that's just me. I'm pervy. I'm weird. But that was her response. I mean, that, that is the truth. You know, the President of the United States has not spoken to Nancy Pelosi or to any Democrats since December 11th, when, when he had that stupid dog and pony show in uh, uh, his office, where he said, yeah, Chuck, I won't blame you. I, I would be proud to show that. Remember that? Yeah. So that was the last time he did any negotiation. The art of the deal. Oh, my God. And meanwhile, what we got here is not just toilets overflowing in national parks all over the country, trash building up, wildlife eating, uh, you know, uh, uh, E. coli and, 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 and things. Oh, my God. But, but, but you couldn't have a better metaphor for the Trump presidency, right? Toilets overflowing and trash piling up. It's ugly. It's disgusting. And very quickly, it becomes dangerous. This is the perfect metaphor for this administration. And asked why? He doesn't just let the government reopen while they debate border security. Trump secretly told Chuck Schumer, I would look foolish if I did that. And Lindsey Graham, not in private, but on the television, actually said out loud that if Trump opens the government without getting his stupid border wall, that is the end of the Trump presidency. That is the end of the GOP. So everybody, you could have my offer right now, Senator. My answer, my offer is this, nothing. And I would appreciate it if you would personally put up the money for the liquor license. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.